guys, it's Trevor Carlson again at Heritage Reverse Mortgage. We are Southern Utah's reverse mortgage specialists. Uh, this is, uh, today is December 22nd. This will be the last video and article I published before Christmas. And so Merry Christmas to you and your family. I hope you have a safe and, and fun holiday. A um, little bit nervous about the weather. It looks like it's going to be snowing. And so if you're traveling today, I, I hope you're being safe. Uh, I'm beginning a, a series of articles and, and videos that will be coming out over the next couple of weeks talking about the myths of reverse mortgages. And uh, the reason I chose to do this is because it's <clears throat> usually as I meet with my clients for the first time, it's very common that they have the same concerns. And so there's a lot of falsities. There's a lot of myths that exist out there that, that are preventing a lot of people from doing a reverse mortgage simply because they don't understand it. And, and the myths are scary enough that rather than research and find out the truth, they'd rather just stay away from it. And so over the course of the next few weeks, as I mentioned, I'm going to publish a few articles that, that tries to clarify, tries to expose some of these myths and gives you the truth. So if it's something you are considering, maybe you'll feel a little bit better about, uh, about uh, your concerns at least to the point that uh, you'd be you know, comfortable giving me a call and, and letting me clarify a little bit further uh, some of the things that might be holding you back from improving your life with a reverse mortgage. And so um, myth number one is uh, the bank gets any remaining equity when I die. This is completely and utterly false. And so in the article, I give an example that, that let's say your home is worth $400,000. When you get your mortgage, uh, let's say your starting balance is $100,000. And then over the course of your lifetime, from that point of getting the mortgage to, to the day that you pass away, you've accrued $70,000 of interest. Okay. So again, your beginning balance was $100,000. Your interest accrued was $70,000. So when you pass away, that's all the bank has claimed to. They can pay off the original balance of the loan. They can pay off any interest that's accrued. But anything beyond that belongs to your estate. And so any remaining equity, again, in this example, there was $230,000 of equity that goes to your estate and your kids have the choice or your, your estate will have the choice of, uh, of paying off the balance of the loan and keeping the home or selling the home and taking that equity in cash. And <clears throat> my typical advice to people, because when this point comes, your, your estate's going to have the choice. Either they can sell the home themselves or they can just tell the bank, you go ahead and sell it, give us whatever's left. My advice is never let the bank sell your home because their, their intention is to get out of it as soon as possible. They want to get their money back right away. And so they're going to take a lower price from what your estate would get. And so if your estate goes through the effort of hiring a professional realtor, uh, listing the home, selling the home, they're going to make a lot more money off of that home uh, versus just giving it to the bank who will do a fire sale just to get out of it as soon as possible. And so... Uh, keep that in mind if, uh, if, if this is a, a path you go down. Um, I think that's about it. Um, again, take some time uh, to read through the article if this is a concern you've heard or you hear about. And, uh, and of course, give me a call if you have any questions beyond that. Again, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year if I don't see you sooner. And, and please be safe. We'll see you.